Planathoners. This is Rebecca McLaughlin of RebeccaMcLaughlin.com, and I'm so excited to get the opportunity to talk with you today. I just love what Amber is up to and believe so much in the power of planning. Um, it has helped me so much personally in my life and professionally in my business, and I really just believe so much in in the importance of really reflecting on the landscape of where we're headed and making plans that are really rich with intention and aligned with our values and in respect with the people that we loved most so we can stay in connection with them. So I just really, really love what Amber is up to and um, I'm glad to be here. So today I want to talk to you about the power of your space and how we can use our physical environments, our homes, our workspaces, etc., to help cultivate our best lives, our most productive lives, our most successful lives, and how we can use our environment as a tool to help us fulfill our plans to make that happen. <laughs> So many of us are unconscious that we are in relationship with our space, that our space actually impacts how we feel, how productive we are, um, how much we can be in connection with the other people around us who we live with or who visit. Um, so I really believe so much that our environment is, is a really important piece in looking at how we can best support ourselves, right? So today I want to introduce you into five ways to really think about your space and start cultivating an environment that is really in support of where you're headed um, and why you're headed that way. So the first, um, the first tool or way that I want to invite you to think about your space is what I call interior insight. And this is where we look at our physical environment as a metaphor for what's going on in our life. Okay, So that could be in your personal life or in your business life. So thinking about your home space as a metaphor for what's going on internally. And also starting to think about your home as the foundation from which your life moves forward. So many of us think about this actually in terms of our bodies, right? We think, we know that we have to keep our bodies healthy. We have to feed our bodies healthy food in order to move forward in so many ways in our lives, right? And if you think about your home as an extension of your body, it is where your, your life lives. It's where your life comes home to rest. It's where your life grows, right? So it really is the doorway from which your life is taking off, from which your life is moving forward. So that's the first thing, to really have an insight about the fact that your environment affects you and you also affect your environment. The second thing is what I call interior function. So this is where we start to look at how your space is working for you. And really at the most basic level, is it functioning? Does it work? Do you have enough light? Do you have enough, are you warm enough? Are, you, are your physical, emotional, intellectual needs met? Do you have a chair you can sit in all day at your, at your desk and be comfortable, right? So this is the first most basic level. Are your needs, your physical needs, your emotional needs, your intellectual needs, your spiritual needs, if you will, um, are they being met? And is your space functioning? I really believe if our space is not functioning to its highest potential, we're also not functioning to our highest potential. So it's really important to look around, and I invite you to do this. Look around. Think about your home or your workspace. Does it function for what you need? Does it flow? Are you getting caught? Do you have enough room? Right. So some of us have clutter, and this is something to just notice. Okay, so the third thing is what I call interior intention. And this is where we start to infuse our homes with our goals, right? Where we want to go, our big plans. And we start to think about what are we ready to welcome in to our lives? What are we ready to make room for? 
And does our space physically have enough room to welcome those things in? Is it in support of our greatest dreams, right? So for some of us, we hold a lot of unconscious intentions throughout our environment. If you think about clutter, clutter can hold tons of intentions and they might even be outdated intentions, right? Intentions that were of something, a, a previous goal, an old happening in our life. And yet it's, it's literally sitting in our environment, um, taking up space. And I believe in many ways blocking us from moving forward. So clutter is something that you know many of us have. It's a big hot spot for many people. And I want to offer you kind of a golden nugget today about how to think about cluttering. So many people say, okay, I have clutter. I need to declutter. Um, I don't like the word declutter. And in fact, I have a new word for it. I call it editing. And the reason is, to me, Decluttering is all about the stuff. It's like I have to deal with the stuff. And that's not motivating for me. But when I think about editing, it's really about me. I'm at the center of my life and I'm really in the driver's seat of creating the kind of life that I want, right? So if the clutter is really not serving where I'm headed, what I'm about, then I wanna edit that out so that there's room for what I really, really desire in my life. So if you're finding, if you're finding clutter in your life, think about um, moving towards it from this perspective of editing rather than decluttering. Okay. The fourth thing is what I call interior meaning. And this is where we want our environments to really hold our deepest values, to reflect to, back to us our greatest beliefs, to support our why right? And we all know, particularly in business, it's hard sometimes. It's really hard, you know, during tough weeks or tough times. And so it's important that our environments have tangible symbols that remind us why we're doing what we're doing and who we are and what we're about and what's most important to us because it's easy to fall off track. So when we think about interior meaning, do you have physical items in your home that represent your why, you know, represent why you're doing what you're doing, who you're doing it for, um, and why you're passionate about it. I mean, this could be something as simple as a picture of your family who you are um, earning an income for. It could be... Um, a big piece of artwork because something one of your deepest values is is personal expression it could be a candle that reminds you of your passion and your purpose and that you're on calling right so having something in your environment that when you fall off track or not even fall off track but it just allows you to reground and to get nourished into you know why you're doing what you're doing and we're human, we can't always do this all the time. So having those physical reminders, is, I have found is so, so powerful. And finally, the fifth thing is what I call interior beauty. And I'm on a mission to bring beauty back into our lives. I think in our cold, fast-paced world, we've really lost the value of beauty and lost or and, and don't remember that beauty can have so much to do with positivity in our lives, with cooperation, with healing, with forward movement. And, you know, I think it's so important to bring beauty into our lives in this really rich, tangible and intangible way and to start looking for beauty, to start placing beauty around us, to start seeing beauty in the intangible moments so that we're nourished and filled up, particularly as women, right? Um, so that's the fifth thing. Those are five things. We have interior insight, seeing your space as a metaphor, interior function, is it working? right? If your space isn't working to its highest potential, my, my belief is we're probably not either. Interior meaning, sorry, interior intention, right? Are, are our goals present in our space? Are they being supported? Um, do we have room to bloom? 
Interior meaning, right, our values, what's most important to us? Do we have symbols that remind us to keep us on track, to remember our why? And finally, beauty. Do we have a relationship with beauty that nourishes us, that inspires us, that reflects back to us our truest, most creative and, and pure spirit? So those are five tools to help you Start looking at your home and maybe cultivating some ideas or seeing some places um, that might be blocks and creating opportunities to start creating an environment that is truly in support of your best life um, and your most productive life so that you can really make forward movement in those plans, right? When our environment is distracting or um, reflecting back to us old priorities, stuck places, it's very hard to move forward in big ways. So I hope this was helpful and um, I wish you so much luck and, and prosperity in your plans and enjoy.